the new episode of the Rings of Power has just been released. And we're in for more of the same. Return to form, they said. Characters facing consequences, they said. Halbrand being the Walter White of Middle Earth, they said. Well, it is back to form, and it's not a good form. We start the season off in Forward Wave, with Sauron declaring the defeat of Morgoth in front of his orcs. And just in case you didn't know, he declares himself as Sauron. I don't know if it's the actor's delivery or just the writing, but the speech sounds like the one in Shrek by Lord Farquhar. Sauron is the leader. Adar and the orcs are not happy at this. And randomly, a straight orc goes and attacks Sauron. <laughs> Sauron easily just beats him up and kills him. He goes on another preachy rant. This is the guy that could easily destroy everyone in that space. But no, he goes on a preachy rant. And then we saw something I thought we would never see. The show goes full Julius Caesar. Sauron is getting attacked from everywhere. He's getting butchered by the orcs, by Adar. And they all just get on top of him and start stabbing him. He could easily overpower them. What is he doing? He's just letting it happen. And this powerful being is being dulled down. He's being depicted as being so weak. They're meant to fear him. And he just gets battered by some orcs. So he just accepts the beating and then blows himself up. This show loves to show Sauron is weak. We see him in a previous shot in the series where he's commanding legions of orcs. So why did they stop following him? Oh well, they don't explain it. So we move on. And Adar is king. All of this, by the way, takes place just before the dawn of the Second Age. Sauron seeps away as a black goo liquid and he is consuming everything he sees because he is all consuming. He's gone full symbiote mode. And as he's crawling away as his black goo, he kills a passerby and we get the reveal how Halbrand is created. Yay. And it looks like he's been wandering around as Halbrand for years and years. How long's the time been between these events? We don't know because they don't explain it. He then bumps into a group of southerners. And he gets a nice lecture about how it's not too late to turn back. And that nothing is set in stone. And he is genuinely listening to this advice. As if they want us to believe that Sauron is going to be good. Or that Sauron can change are they trying to convince us that if he legit listened to Gladwell and Gladwell went on his side, that he could have been good and that he would have turned good for her? Do you remember Halbrand on the water with the big sea creature? Well, we are back there and Halbrand is getting more lectures. And we see the sea monster attacking from Halbrand's view as if we wanted that POV. And so we see more of Halbrand. He's not a changed man yet. Instead of helping a trapped man, he steals his emblem and dips. You'll recognise that emblem. It's the same one that he had in season one that confirms that he is somehow the king of the Southlands. And we have another reminder of Gladwell swimming for miles and miles and randomly bumping into Sauron in the middle of the sea. As if we need a reminder of that ridiculous scene. Back in Eregion, have you seen the Fellowship of the Ring? If not, you've got a better version. We have a shot for shot horse chase scene between Alrond and Galadriel, the commander of the Northern Armies. This is shot exactly the same as the chase scene between Arwen and the Ring Wraiths. Another callback to the trilogy that is far more superior than your own, because Alrond has taken all three rings. And Galadriel's not happy about this. Why wouldn't she be on his side? Sauron, her sworn enemy, has had a hand in making the rings. Surely she wouldn't trust them. But no, she's been manipulated, by the way. And she gets captured and taken to Gilgalad. At this point, she's still not told anybody about Halbrand's identity. She gets questioned by Gilgalad about who Halbrand is. And she's still reluctant to tell them. Why, why, why? 
She has endangered the whole of a region and she still won't say anything. Instead of answering, she then goes on to blame Alrond for the state of Moria. What the hell has this got to do with the argument? Alrond is just being a cook at this point. I mean, he, he isn't wrong. Don't forget, Galadriel can't be wrong. She has taken no responsibility for her actions. If you're expecting a changed Galadriel, then you are mistaken. Gil-galad decides he wants to keep the rings to help save Middle-earth. So he's full-on trusted Galadriel, despite the fact that she is hidden Halbrand's identity, despite the fact that she's hidden, that Sauron has been here, he decides, you know what, I'm going to trust Galadriel. And so he openly threatens Alrond over the rings. They are making Alrond the baddie for making the right decision. Then Alrond does what any sane person would do after watching the rings of power. He chucks himself off the cliff and he escapes. If you didn't get it the first time, Amazon has you covered. We see a volcano erupting and the title card of Mordor appears again. Halbrand is back in modern day and he's in chains being taken to Adar to swear allegiance. My man Waldrig is back. Thank the gods. The man who single-handedly created Mordor and will be the reason subsequently for the creation of the One Ring. As Waldrig is barking orders, Halbrand turns himself in to Adar under the disguise of the King of the Southlands. Halbrand is offering to team up with Adar as he talks about Galadriel and Sauron teaming up to attack Adar. Adar wants more answers and Halbrand refuses to give them and so he is imprisoned. Not Gandalf and not Frodo are back. And he's speaking perfect English. Speaking of more Lord of the Rings callbacks, not Gandalf is lost with not Frodo. And they are going around in circles because they are lost. And they are being followed. Hmm, I wonder what they're calling back to. They find a tree stump in the middle of this desert and not Frodo wants Gandalf to cast a spell. He makes a face as if he's about to finish himself. It appears he can't do it and blows up the tree. But hold up, bugs appear. And like the sycophants they are, they eat them. Around a campfire, Gandalf talks about his PTSD and mentions how wizards aren't all fair. How would he know this at this point? He's not explored anything. As far as we know in the show, He's just been hanging around with the Harfoots, so how would he know? But I'm sure that this will come up later. Not Frodo misses Not Sam, and they reminisce about missing their homes. But hold up, Not Gandalf notices that they are being watched, and so puts out the fire. Back with Hal Brandio, he is on a hunger strike, and Waldrig is trying to convince him to eat and to follow Adar. Because Sauron doesn't listen to him, I never thought I'd be saying this, Waldrick beats up Sauron. <laughs> Waldrick is a giga chad. Waldrick wanders away and then Sauron tames a demented warg. Next up, we're at the Grey Havens. After surviving his fall, Alrond has come to seek the help of Kiridan, the ship right. The music is actually very beautiful during this scene and that is one of the improvements of the season so far. And the shots do look great. We see a couple of shots of him at work. He's got an apprentice there who I'm sure is going to be better than anything that he can do. As Kiridan returns to his gaff, he notices a cook Alrond hiding away. Alrond wants Kiridan to destroy the rings, as anyone with a right mind would want to do. We then cut back to Gilgalad, and he sends word to Calabrimbor that Halbrand is Sauron. So surely Calabrimbor would not take him in the next time they meet. Now this is the first time that Galadriel gets a, a little bit of a telling off, if you would call it that. Gilgalad partly has a go at Galadriel for allowing Sauron to return, but Galadriel can't do anything wrong. So Gilgalad is going to go along with Commander Galadriel and decides he wants to use the rings. So far in the show, it's not Sauron who's the master manipulator, it's Galadriel. She swears to destroy Sauron 
and Gilgalad believes her. While it's a shame she tried to hide his identity for her own selfish reasons and didn't immediately go to Gilgalad once she found out this information. If a bunch of petty orcs can slay Sauron, surely the highly skilled elves of Eregion and the commander of the northern armies could easily deal with him. Her actions carry no consequences. I'm sorry, but what is this armor? The helmet looks three times too big. It just looks clunky. So Gilgalad and Gladual are trying to locate Alrond. And guess what? Gladual, being the great detective that she is, figures out Alrond's plan. Straight away, this is writing at its best. Kiridan and Alrond are sitting, reminiscing about Calabrimbor. The master smith who didn't know what an alloy was. They discuss that Sauron didn't touch the rings, and so they aren't evil. Hold up, you legit a second ago said that Sauron's work has already been started as elves are fighting elves. And so we're just going to trust the rings, are we now? Alrond is the only one talking sense, but no one will listen to him. So apparently, if they destroy the rings, then the elves will be destroyed. Because remember, the rings contain Mithril, the magical healing material that is going to save all the elves. After more discussion, they decide again that the rings need to be destroyed. Their chit-chat is disturbed by a commotion outside. And you guessed it, it's Galadriel. And she's here with the SS. And she's going to sort him out. She arrives with Gilgalad, who straight up wants to remove him from his position. Yeah, because he's doing all the wrong things, isn't he, Gilgalad? They butchered my boy! Gladriel decides that she's the one that's going to approach Alrond, and she says she wants to coax him willingly. Jeez, the master of manipulation. She somehow turns it on him, and it's his responsibility to do the right thing and follow her plan. He has no free will. Or saying this, all must follow her. She is starting to sound like a little Austrian painter. And we get the beautiful quote again. Free is balance. Yeah, sure. Alrond actually stands his ground for once, saying that she chose the path, not him. She is shocked by this. And still, she tries to justify that the rings are good because she believes it is right. And rightly so, Alron pulls her up on this, saying the obvious, that this might be Sauron's work. But like a kid with ADHD, she just ignores it and wanders off and notices that Kiridan is missing and she's not happy. And she demands Alron tell her where the rings are. Kiridan has them and he's sailing away on a small boat. Not Gandalf, has learnt how to set a trap for whoever is following them. Definitely not stealing material from the previous films. We have another callback. Do you remember the scene where Sam climbs the stairs in The Return of the King and his shadow gives off the impression that he's a bigger threat than he actually is? We get that again with not Samwise Gamgee. She is back. So they've set a trap. So they set a trap. And she wanders into it with some of the worst editing and directing I've ever seen. In broad daylight, she fails to notice a thick, long rope. And so she trips on it and not Frodo throws a blanket on her as she reacts to the fall, which is one of the stupidest sounds I've ever heard. It really is laughable. From where they're standing on the rocks, how do they not see Poppy? And how does Poppy not see them? They're not even trying to hide it. She stood blatantly on the rocks. And then with more bad editing, we reveal that it is Poppy that has been trapped. How has she survived all this way by herself with no food? How long have they been traveling for? She mentions that not Frodo's dad has been given her chores. So she must have stayed around for a while and not followed them straight away. If so, how has she managed to find them? And how has she managed to catch them up? Is she a master tracker? Gandalf has a sing song and we cut to them walking and walking whilst talking to the lyrics of the song. It felt like I was in an Andrew Lloyd Webber show. As not Gandalf is reminiscing about the stars, we see some Tuscan raiders in the distance spying on him. They are marked with the eye of Sauron, the same one 
as the Eminem clan. Kiridan has finally stopped his boat, and as he's about to litter the rings in the ocean, the sea punches his ship, and so he abandons that plan and takes the rings. No second attempt, no following through, he just gives up. And this is our first impression of Kiridan. Back with Adar. Adar is talking to Sauron about how he was formed. He was one of 13 chosen by Morgoth to receive power. After turning, he sees Sauron and he starts to say how good looking he is. And after more Sauron loving, he asks Halbrand what he knows about Sauron. Halbrand says that Sauron is back and they don't know what form he has taken and that the elves have trusted Halbrand and he will point out Sauron so that Adar can destroy him. And with no questions by Adar and no interrogation, he just believes him. The writing's just awful. And Halbrand swears allegiance to Adar and is free to wander about. The orcs are just wandering about in daylight at this point, forgetting that they'll burn. And an orc has been given the task by Adar to follow Halbrand. Now for the most upsetting and anger inducing scene, my man Waldrig gets eaten by a walk. I will never forgive you Amazon. We have a ceremony of elves in Eregion. Gilglad is singing his heart out and Gladril sees that the trees are rotting. If only they had the mithril rings that could stop this spread. And you know, Auron's back home, not in chains for rebellion. He's just doing whatever he wants. Has he been punished? No idea. Gilgalad has decided that he wants to take the elves home. And so all the elves are looking very sullen. Until Kiridan returns with the rings. He's wearing Naya and as Auron shouts, Gilgalad drops the rings. And the ring Nenya arrives at Gladwell's feet. The ring has chosen her for some reason. She picks it up. And despite Auron being angry a second ago, all he can resort to is saying no. Where's your fight gone? You are so passionate a minute ago and now you've got nothing to say because you can't be seen shouting at Galadriel. Then they all put the rings on and the sun appears and everyone is happy as the Mithril in real time heals the trees like something out of a Disney film. They make it look like the tree in Valinor. Are they trying to imply that that tree was made of Mithril? Alrond, being upset by this and not having any power despite being one of the wisest people in Middle Earth, just walks away. So, what did we learn? Galadriel can't do wrong. The Forges are back up and running as we get our first shot of Calabrimbor with his new apprentice. There's been an urgent message. A man from the Southlands is at the gates. So Calabrimbor goes to check it out. The timelines are all over the place. One minute Halbrand's in Mordor and within the same episode he's back at Eregion. And why is he allowed to roam free in Eregion? This place should be on high alert. They found out that a man disguised as a Southland king is not the man who they think he is and that in fact he is Sauron. So why do they not immediately raise the signal and send word to Gilgalad? I guess we will never know. In conclusion, none of the characters have any consequences for their actions. Galadriel's allowed to do whatever she wants because the show writers love her. And so whatever mistakes she makes, she'll get away with it. She'll find a way out. She allowed Sauron to be in a region without telling anyone once she found out that he is Sauron. Nah, it's okay. We got the rings of power. Alrond is so powerless. I don't know why he's even in it. How Brand is just playing a downbeat Sauron. We definitely got more of the same from season one. The timelines are all over the place. The story doesn't add up. The acting and directing is awful. The one good thing I had was the music is a lot better and has improved from season one. Right, guys and girls, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section what you think about episode one. Do you agree with my opinion or do you think it's a load of dross? All comments are welcome. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, share and peace.